Moyes is with us to look back at the rest of the weekend's Gaelic football. Uh, we could start with Division 1, I think. And um, Yep, why not? Uh, we've been talking about this a bit over the last few weeks. Like, some teams need a click of form and some teams need strength and depth and other teams realise that nothing matters until the group stages this year. <laughs> yeah. So we don't know what we don't know in terms of periodization and teams training through stuff. But Kerry, a bit flat and concerns about the goalkeeper and a few, few more question marks than maybe they would like at this stage of the year? Um, I don't think so. I think they were actually... I thought it was a great game. It was a really, really good game. You could see a marked difference in the speed of the game. Um, it was... The intensity was good. I thought the referee did a good job, allowed allowed it to flow. It probably was a, at a level higher than a challenge match level um, with intensity-wise and, and tackling and stuff like that. But speed, it was definitely at that kind of a middle of championship pre just just you know kind of after one or two rounds both teams going at it loads of pace in it um, lots of players coming back for Kerry you know Gavin White started um, O'Connor came off the bench um, he was pretty ruthless I thought O'Connor Jack O'Connor in whipping a few lads early even and getting other guys on um, but they showed um, I thought you know they had a real go at it, and, and and it was a real battle of the heavyweights. To be honest with you, Jer, I thought the keeper was, you know, I thought he was unfortunate for the goal. You know, he probably should have just fisted it. He actually went to catch it, and because he went to catch it, his his left hand hit the post and it just bounced out of his hand. Um, apart from that, I thought kickouts were fine. I think they both both teams just kind of conceded the kick out the first half. Sixteen of sixteen with a couple of minutes left to go. The the graphic showed up. Yeah, yeah, ball. yeah. So they were they were playing a plus one at the back. Obviously, obviously Galway where um and you know they. He obviously had a plan for Clifford. I thought Clifford was poor, actually. Um, you know, he he. But but Kelly showed you how to play Clifford, and the only way to play him is as soon as the ball breaks down, you go. Yeah. Like he he joined the attack. I'd say he must have joined the attack. He could have joined the attack forty times. <laughs> he just literally went, and even out a couple of times when Clifford was beside him, like there was one little clip where Clifford's actually tracking him. And you're kind of thinking, okay, he's going to stop now. But he continues on, and he gets a hand pass, and he gets fouled for for a free. Um, he was he was. Like, it's the one thing. Sorry, I think his defending lacks a little bit at times. But as a, but as a, as a plus one coming from that defence, when he goes, <clears throat> he goes extremely hard. Kelly, extremely you're talking hard. about Kelly. Yeah, okay. yeah. Full Best fullback in the country, probably at the minute on form. Well, I think yeah, and I think I think in doing that, in what he gives you, you know, because he never he never half commits to, mm. you know. So so as a, as a, as a, as a forward line, you're nearly because Kerry I thought were a bit were a bit surprised by it. Clifford obviously wasn't going to make those runs back. He made a few, but you don't want him all the way sixty yeah. yards from his own goal. So they allowed him to go, and Galway most definitely had an, had had a plan, which was as soon as he goes, let's find him because he didn't go down the right wing or the left wing. Jerry, he kept it going straight down the. Mm. and he always added an option and then of course he's smart enough when he gets into those areas that he just looks for okay where's the pass and he's smart enough he's a very good he's an intelligent footballer so he gets the head up and he passes the ball so it's 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 definitely something that people will mark and go okay this is how we put them under pressure um, from a Clifford point of view Now at some point Kerry are going to just say you just stay where you are the oh. counteractors, yeah, yeah. So they'll get another player to tag him as he goes, yeah. you know. So a half forward or something will, will will observe and then click it up. But but it's still hard enough to pick up, you know. It's still because you sometimes mm. have to do it because it will add an extra man. And if you're playing as well, it it can be, you know, a lot of teams do it. Just not many teams do it from a central point of view. From a three, they usually do a two or four. Uh, they've been called coming in under the radar so much that they're now like be 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 being heavily on the radar on all radars. But go away, like with. Yeah. So uh, there's a, f- a free or maybe it's a, a 40 with um, a minute of the four minutes of stoppage time on the clock and Sean O'Shea decides right I'm going to stick it over the bar and we get possession back and then they don't get possession back yeah. that was like Dublin-esque from at their peak from Galway at the end of the game they're very impressive at the moment and, and if you watch there's a couple of great scores they got where they're working off loads of yeah. angles loads of runners Matthew coming Tierney at had one of them yeah. And yeah. I, think, I think it's the one you're talking about mm. in the first half and if you watch I rewound it three or four times just to see where he starts and it's it's absolutely training ground stuff but it's seamless 
you know, it really is seamless. You wouldn't, like, unless you really observe it, you're like, okay, every single player there knew where they were going. It was just, a, it was a, like a double cross and Tierney just comes around, mm. he gets the jump on the man and as a defender, defender never has a chance because he he just goes, he literally just waits for the option. You know, the, the, the defender's eyes get taken and he pops the ball over the bar. They're playing really, really good stuff, Galway. Cool. And they're one of the, I was looking at all the defences. Um, so the top defence in the first two or the, t- the top two divisions are Derry. They've conceded at least 69 scores or something like this, which is ridiculously low. Um, but Galway, I think, are second. Right. So, so they're really mean at the back now. You know, and people would have always said, and even when I played, it was always kind of nearly a shootout with Galway. You know, it was like, you score, we score. Let's see how we go. You've got some great forwards, but your defence is a little bit... Apart from the Kevin Walsh era when they got slaughtered for being really defensive. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There was yeah, this, but I Joyce think is built on that. He has, you know, in he, fairness, like, I mean, like he's a... Like a Porrick is, is, is a... He's not a guy who's just done... A lot of managers will come in, you know, and they'll rip it up and just say, good luck. Well, he, he <laughs> did that at the start, and then there was a come-to-Jesus moment yeah. where he realised, actually, you know what, everything Kevin Walsh was doing wasn't bad and they've they've married the two exactly and that's worked out really well for them but and look that shows great maturity from any manager who comes in and goes oh I'm going to be, do it my way and then has the humility to listen to what the players are saying and what the results are showing and then to change it so there's a lot made of the, like, the, the likes of um, uh, Tom O'Callaghan and Maher as well coming into the team but like to see Comer come off the bench with his bionic leg yesterday you're like well this is an option straight away you could see that he was being used as an option for for balls in which is going to add an extra element to this yeah, yeah, going yeah. team boost off and back and they'll want as we were saying earlier they'll want a division one title like Big time. No. Absolutely they will. Yeah, because they need to get, well, not that they need to get, but it's, it's, it's another little tick, you know, as, as regards silverware. You know, it's not, a, it's not the be-all and end-all for them, but players back, Comer uh, gets a score, you know, causes a bit of mayhem, but they're very, I always remember a few years ago where they were knocking on that door they were a little bit light up front. Mm. You know, they'd one or two options and it was kind of like if we could just, if we if we sort that out, you know, they don't have enough power and pace really to break us down. Now they've been a bit of an ability coming from all over. They have loads of forward yeah. options, it seems. Lots of them. I think the maturity that Shane Walsh has at this stage of his career too, to be able to play whatever way he's required to play mm. uh, as opposed to Obviously, it was complete Hollywood stuff in the All Ireland final last year, but that's because all the rest of the forwards were bottled up. Now you feel like um, he he can influence a game irrespective of whether or not he's at the absolute peak of his own powers, and that's been a long time coming. And that's doesn't everybody doesn't always get there who have who are blessed with his talents. No, true, and I think I think they they kind of tried to overplay him a little bit in the first half. Yes, they were looking for those popped balls in in front of him, uh, and Kerry were aware of it. And exactly as you say, so they just changed it up. And he changed it up, actually. He kind of started to come out and forage a bit more out around the half-forward line. I think, look, they have a very, very good management team. I think they're a smart management team. They can play it different ways with you. They're getting a bit more cynical, much more cynical. Um, They have a lot of big men around the Mm. middle who are very mobile and who can take scores. And, you know, by the way, I know we're talking a little bit. I thought Kerry were equally as impressive. Okay, right. uh, Let's go into Kerry then, because... I wasn't sure if um, Kerry are one of those teams who literally have one, maybe one and a half games where they're going to be at full pelt yeah. between now and the group stages. And it looks like their draw in the group stages is going to be relatively straightforward as well. Um, so it's th- like they can plan for an All-Ireland quarterfinal weekend and to be peaking for that. Yeah, I think like they 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 started off slow. They, they, the goal was 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 a, was a bad goal to concede. But at the same time, when they needed to up it and go through the gears, they did. Um, Clifford had an off day. Okay, from a, from a forwards point of view, um, Paddy Clifford I thought was absolutely fantastic. Yep. Like he got around the pitch. The amount of work he did. He was playing as a twelve yesterday, which I thought was interesting. So they were before playing him in kind of a thirteen, and then letting him forage out, doing that kind of quarterback role. But so he was much deeper actually this yep. time. Like he was picking up balls off the full back line yeah, yeah, yeah. but he he seamlessly just cuts through as he you know he kind of slaloms up the field and it's like no one can get a mm. touch on him left foot so right what, foot what difference will that make in the summer um, if, if they were to do because they're obviously trying to for a reason and maybe it's like we want to get kilometres into your legs we want to get you you know feeling the weight of the ball and in summertime yeah. they go back to it but maybe they don't maybe this is like he's actually going to be a half forward and some of the other players who we've been talking about maybe do make it into the team by the time. Yeah, we've and like I know we've been. It's nearly every week we've been all kind of saying, okay, is he? Is that the next? Is that the next corner <laughs> forward? Well, actually, I think I'm, I'm, if I was in a race now, I'm saying 
Tony Brosnan is 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 the leader to get in. I tell you why. I'm not comparing him. I'm not saying he's he's Gooch, right? Um, he has a lot to go to get to Gooch's level. But what he has is his his ability to see a pass, and when he gets his head up. So the pass last week, mm. where he does the no look pass, where he swings it across with his right foot, right to left. He did another one yesterday, yeah. where he's just actually I think he gives it to Paddy Clifford. All the defence is kind of, everyone is looking this way, everyone is moving with him, and then he just switches it back. I think I think in Crow Park, with some room around him, so I'd say he's the one to come out to centre forward, if you get me, to kind of yeah. go around there. Sean O'Shea will do his, his robust style out around there, and Clifford will drop deeper. And and will will supply the balls, and then he'll have that that ability, and then they'll isolate Clifford, who will be have the ability to move left or right on you as a full back line. And if you have someone, I think O'Shea O'Shea is kind of always his mo has been get it and move, whereas Brosnan is get it and just slip and look for a pass. And I think that's one thing that they're missing that quick ball in, but it's a smart ball. So it's a good combination to have, and also it gives you a deeper playmaker now as well. Correct. So you don't lose anything by not having Paddy Clifford doing that role because you've got somebody who can do similar, exactly, or, or evolve into somebody who can do similar. And now you have Paddy being able to do that from the half back line. Well, what have most teams done with Paddy? They've put a man on him. So Hessian did it with Mayo. They mm. just put him on him and said, right, wherever he goes, you go. So that's okay. So if you want to follow me all into into my own full back line, that's yeah. okay because I'm now bringing you all the way up with me and actually we'll get Gavin White or we'll get Tom O'Sullivan to go. Yeah. I'll I'll play a bit of a rope-a-dope with you. So I won't really... And then I can get onto the ball as the ball comes up the field because we actually have a player up there who can now pass just as good as me. So I think Brosnan is the guy who is, for me, if he continues in the way... Like I heard Jack O'Connor saying last week, I'm not surprised by that. He's a very talented player. We just need him to get more confident. That's the type of thing that I think that they, they, they need. And little... <laughs> another weapon yeah. for the rest of the county to, or the country to deal with. I don't know where you lads wanted to go next, but the, the Tyrone Armagh game was fascinating for me because you take yeah. out the relegation even but like Tyrone co- kind of coming back into it but uh, Kieran McGinney I don't know how he's going to be feeling this morning because re- relegation for Armagh is probably disastrous w- when you look at some of the counties it, it, like it's probably his last year let's be honest with, with I don't with know Armagh. I don't like, know I, 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 I like so the one I love McGinney as Kildare manager I mm. thought it was great for him, uh, not being relevant they were suddenly relevant and you see what's happened ever since, right? Yeah. So, like, I definitely would attribute a lot of the, the success of that period to him. And you talk to anybody who was involved with this, and they say the same. But he was never that interested in the league. I always thought if Kildare were going to make the breakthrough, that they mm. needed to do a Monaghan on it and stick in, learn to manage games, learn to be a Division One team, so that everybody who comes to training every week is always at Division One standard. Yeah. And and so the legacy of that era was that we were a Division 2 team and have been a Division 2 team basically ever since with occasional up and down up and down yeah. um, the new Ross Common uh, and if I think if Armagh were going to be serious contenders year in year out then that would have been a good thing for them but he doesn't care about that he's never cared about it and so I don't think he's that worried about the fact that they've been relegated I think he's more worried about the fact that he says that they've, they've lost a lot of close games in the last 10 minutes so that's what they have done. You something know, a bit yeah. weedy. Well, they've lost a lot of clothes. Look, yeah. they, they've, you know, they, 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 so the last two games, like the Galway game was a bit of a sickener for them. That, that was a game I thought they should have scored more in the first half. Then they were playing against a Gale the second half. They couldn't contain Galway and they got bet by two points. Let they got beaten yeah. by two points yesterday. Mm. They got bet by a goal by, from Armagh and they got bet by a point, I think, against... Who was the last one? The other one. Can't remember, but they were bet by a point. So they've lost four you know, by really, you could say, two by two scores and then two points each. I think they've been desperately unlucky. But I think they've been a bit of, they've kind of written their own downfall to a certain degree from being a team last year that was swashbuckling, kicking the ball, very offensively, or you know, kind of ordinated, really, really going at it, going at the juggler, to a team now that has kind of gone, we're nearly a little bit afraid of it. I know people are saying he needed to tighten up, but I think they've, Overly tightened. Oh, we were talking to Morris Brosnan about this on Friday, and he was making the point that the uh, the transformation in style is is very marked, and that actually there's a significant uh, change towards a shorter game than the long game they were playing. Mm. Part of me wonders again: you're in the league, you're like, we're going to do this, we're going to perfect this, but we have the other game plan to go back to mm. when it comes to the championship, so that over the course of the group stages. Uh, we'll need both of these styles to get to an Ireland quarter final yep. and then if we're going to beat Derry or if we're going to beat Galway or Mayo or Dublin 
then we need more than one thing in our armory. Because last year they were very reliant on uh, somebody doing something miraculous to get them back into games or to change the pattern of yeah. games. So yeah. And they were kind of reliant a bit on that, remember that quick early ball, the, yeah. the O'Neill lads, into Rean O'Neill, you know, him doing something brilliant with it, which, you know, again, I've, heard, I've seen people say, oh, you know, they're playing him like a Murphy and that they're allowing him drift out. They know what he can give you at full forward. And so, if Rean O'Neill so. was fit yesterday, maybe they get the draw and maybe they're a Division One team next year. Correct. I know, there's only Absolutely. two points in it. Yeah, yeah. I d- look, I think he will be disappointed in the fact that... Now, he'll probably look at it and say, well, did we actually... Are we in a situation where we kept it very tight? So what is it? What what was our defensive structure like? Okay, um, I didn't look at the, the the actual stats on them, but they're probably top five or top six over the over the first two divisions. I would imagine because I don't think they got blown out mm. in any games. No. So they kept it relatively tight. But I just think you're right. You know. Again, Kieran's a smart guy. Okay, he's a good backroom team. They're going to be able to decipher what exactly they need and when they need it, and who. And also, I think they're tailoring for certain teams. Like if you remember the Kerry game, they definitely factored that one in. They were kind of saying, "Listen, this is a potentially. So, what do we need to do to try to stop these guys?" Yeah. So they went ultra defensive. They did the same for Galway. Yeah. Um. So I think. But I, I think I said it last week. It got a bit of paralysis by analysis. It's it's hard as well when you when you you don't have these guys seven days a week okay so it's hard to overload stuff you know you need sometimes just that natural kind of instinct mm. and that natural game plan to come to come to the fore yeah. um, but I think they'll be okay they'll pick themselves up they'll be okay they'll be ready for championship but it's again it's it's, it's later on that they're, that well, they're aiming for it suddenly becomes a, a high wire act again. for them it, mm. after a bad league campaign if Ulster goes bad confidence before the round robin would be very low do you know but after the first two games they beat Monaghan <clears throat> away I remember in the, in the first game of Blaney and I think the Mayo draw was the next game so after two games you're thinking well Armagh have three points they're, they're going to be oh, yeah. looking for a Division yeah. 1 final yeah. here their yeah. mind yeah. staying yeah. up yeah. and also you know what you don't like hearing these rumours WhatsApp rumours and all this stuff going on. I didn't get too much into it but you just don't want to hear that mm. no it's um, it, it's suggestive of a circus and yeah. you know um, yeah now they all showed up with shiners yesterday. The five of them had shiners, including McGinney. Well, what was that about? I don't know, and he wouldn't say. So I mean, yeah, well, like if you're going to create a bit of mystery, you know, yeah, exactly. I presume it's something to do with him doing BJJ, and it was like, you know, Rins, what's yeah. that camp? John Cavanagh punched him or something. Oh seven, the South African rugby team went to the camp. Oh for, yeah, for the World Cup the, with, yeah, the, yeah. with the with the that. army. Yeah, yeah. yeah. mad yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, can't yeah. murder or something. Was going yeah, to yeah. yeah. Um, Cluxton. A big deal, not a big deal, just a good sign that yeah. you're managing resources properly when there's uh, depth chart issues at goalkeeper? There are, like Evan Comerford is injured. Uh, I believe, you know, he's he's on the way back. He should be back, uh, I would say, in the next three to four weeks. So he will add, obviously, to it. I think so. You know, it's it's weird. The goalkeeper is a weird spot. You know, you can play, like in the Premiership or in, you know, soccer, you can play till, you know, 40 Tino's odds. still playing. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, and you know, goalkeepers are a certain type. Um, Cluxton will keep himself fit. There's no doubt about that. Does he have the ability, the agility, the strength, the nuance? Is it someone that they can trust within the camp? The problem with, with bringing fellas in, it, ch- championship teams, you always do the old A's versus B's, but then you'll also have a couple of A and others dr- dropped in, kind of who are doing mm. well during the club season or whatever it was. That was the old way. So you get four or five lads to come in on a Saturday afternoon. And the the big question mark was if there was a guy who was a real you know, standout, but could you trust him? And what's his demeanour like around the group? That's box ticks for Cluxton. Yeah. But, you know, because Cluxton was never about him. So he's never going to walk in there and go, it's all about me. And so Farrell is going to know that he will seamlessly slip in if he needs to, but he will also have an aura and a presence within the dressing room. Yeah. I mean, suddenly the dressing room has a lot of uh, knowledge back in. I, I So we were having this debate earlier on about, oh, he's not coming back to stay on the bench. I think that he may well be coming back to be... A player who is ready if called upon, but is not first choice. I, I, it'd be it'd be difficult to drop David O'Hanlon after the league campaign he's had. Absolutely, yeah. And he's played really well. So Cluxon would need to be unbelievable in training and in challenge matches for that to happen. Yeah, and I also don't think I honestly don't think even if he was sorry, he would have to be. If you were marking him out of ten, O'Hanlon would have to be down around three or four, and 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 Cluxton would have to be ten out of ten at every. For me to kind of go as a management team, we put him in because I actually think it disrupts it 
too much by putting him in. So then someone will ask, well, then why have him there? Well, you have all the other reasons to have him there. His experience, his know-how, his 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 demeanour, his personality, in that he'll help O'Hanlon mm. rather than come in. Like some fellas who come back, they're just trying to cut the legs off you, you know, yeah. get rid of you. Yeah, he'll yeah. actually help him. He'll help him along the way. He'll probably say to him, listen, and not in an arrogant way. He's not that type of fella. He might just, he'll offer up his his his, his, his knowledge and his experience and he'll say, look, maybe try it this way or whatever Is it is. Also, potentially a future Dublin manager and, you know, is there like a, a sense of like them handing this on in, in some I, way? I, I doubt they're even thinking about that, Jerry. to be honest. That's, that's, that's you know, I, I, I would say Farrell knows we're under pressure with a goalkeeper. Do we bring a belter in from some place that we don't really know? Uh, we've seen him play. He's been in a few challenge matches. Or do we go back to the tried and tested? Yeah. And do we go back to a guy... They probably know Comerford's coming back as well in another few weeks. I think the, the injury's being managed now, so it's probably just at the, 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 the last kind of degree of it. So they're probably saying, well, listen, he's a good guy to have around again um, in the dressing room. And it's, it's that leadership thing. Like, we're talking about leaders. Like, you know, with, with another Division One team that are now Division Two, Dunny Gall, you talk about leadership. And, and, you know, Jesus, yesterday, they were absolutely yeah, putrid. Enough. Yeah, Putrid, like Roscommon. I do I kind of Roscommon coming into the championship game against Monaghan, and we were debating this. Do you want to be in a Division One league final? Where's the mentality going to be? Roscommon would not want to read too much into that, Jesse, because Donegal's second half were just literally just twenty take. of the twenty-one points I think were from play. Yeah. Roscommon it was ridiculous. No, Donegal, there was so much. If you watch it, talk about a lack of fight, a lack of effort, and no, um, no bounce from the bit where they're involved in the removal of the manager you expect mm. the team at that stage something. to give something the question I had for you lads was in Leinster Lyle, uh, Liam Jackson's goal for Lyle the Esther was brilliant they showed some signs of a team that could be the number one or sorry number two team in, the, in Leinster but mm. getting to that Leinster final now all of a sudden for Kildare and Meath is huge Oh, it's massive. I mean, well, could they play the dubs in the semi? So, well, sorry, they're not. Gonna, yeah. They're not going to make it, regardless. Sorry, unlikely, of course. But yeah. the likes of Louth play Westmead, I think, in a quarterfinal in Leinster. So there's some big games oh, there. Well, there's potentially Loud Mead semi final. Right, uh, yeah. Tommy has them second as the second best team in Leinster at the moment. I, I, I can't make a case that's yeah. Kildare better than them. They were in the same league as them. They played all the same opponents and they finished behind them. No, I can't. I, look, at, you know, you look at it. I thought they were. They thought they were never going to win that game. I thought always Dublin were in control, but they had a couple of goal chances that I think would have made it a little yeah. bit more interesting. Um, and again, they've lost a lot of really good players. Some of their best players they've yeah. lost over the last number of weeks. Tom but they're Motor, very yeah. well set up. You can see that. Um, but they'll learn from it. Mickey Hart and Devlin will learn from that yesterday against Dublin. Um, of course, the last lads are the Houdini boys. Mm-hmm. You know, sorry, of course, we just need to go there. I'll, I'll leave that. But there. I, 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 you wanted a bit of posture in this morning. At least. I have, I have, I have nightmares about Monaghan, Jer, and I still, it's still oh five, yes, oh five. Like I mean, this is where this. I don't know what it is. Greatest like, day I mean, of my that was some, greatest day of my life. By the way. Division two league final. If you don't remember, Paul Finley lobs the ball in. Monaghan two points down. Last kick. Anthony's on the yeah, pitch. Sean Boylan <laughs> up, up against Banty. <laughs> ah, it was, it was, I, I don't know what it is. There must be a relic buried in Monaghan <laughs> because literally since then, and it's probably before then. But I, there was there was five of us on the line that day. Paul Finley. They, I think we were two up. You were two they, up. They yeah. had to go for goal. With last the last kick. kick. There was five of us on the line, which included myself, Darren Fay, Mark Ward. I think David Gallagher was the keeper and someone. The, 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 the cumulative height of just it was got probably about 60 or 70 foot, right? The ball comes in, Wardy. You won't wait. Sorry about this, Wardy. I got a chill when you said Mark Ward's name there. <laughs> he puts the hand up, calls for it, and instead of catching it, he fists it. It slices off the top of his fist and straight into the back of the net. And Still on a point. Yeah. Wardy gets Monaghan Player of the Year that year. <laughs> and I think he did. Has he still got freedom of. Freedom Carrick. of Monaghan Town, yeah. We, had a civic, we genuinely there was a civic reception after that game in Monaghan. Because <laughs> but that's, that, that has been the start of it. I cannot believe. Well, sorry. We did say it last week. And, and by the way, I don't think we disagreed with you. No, you didn't for sure. Uh, no, because no. Mayo put out the I did, team. actually. I thought they were gone. Mm. I thought they were going to be gone. But it did, it did help. It did help with Mayo. Selection, yeah, but you know yeah. what? You can only beat what's in front of you. Keep and fair, fair play to you, right? Anthony, good stuff. Thanks a million. Cheers Anthony Maud's with us this week looking at the uh, weekend's Gaelic football. It's 17.